Hello everybody, Colton Hunter here. Welcome back to a set of Corsa. Today we're going to go back to looking at some mods because more stuff's coming out. Uh, new tracks specifically, but the .20 update also just came out for the game which implements some of the tools required to make custom cars for the game as well. So uh, very soon I bet we'll be seeing some custom cars being added. They have mentioned that Custom physics are probably not going to be part of that just yet, but uh, at least we'll be able to modify or see modified car bodies in the game soon, I would say. But where are we at today? We are at the Alps, which is another uh, one of those um, kind of time trial type of tracks, uh, road rallies, similar to the, uh, what was the last one we did? Something like Jow Plains or something like that. I know it was French sounding. That's all I know. <laughs> Uh, this one looks to be a little bit more open, a little bit more of a modern style, open, like, two-lane road. Uh, a little bit shorter. We are in the BMW E30 DTM, which I used to pretty good success last time in the multiplayer mode. I started to really enjoy the car, so that is why I picked it. Um, I think that's all there is to discuss besides hitting the track. I'm going to do the forwards way first, which I assume will be uphill, or at least mildly uphill. It doesn't look like it's as hilly as Jaw Plains was, but uh, this one this one has a forward and reverse as well, so we'll, we'll start with a forward, and then we will do the reverse. Alrighty, so I don't know if this one works the same way that the timer starts immediately. Or maybe, no, it looks like it's going to start when we cross the line. Okay. Much better. Now I noted in the uh, download for the track, which I will, once again, put links in the description for all of these. Uh, this one has some kind of graphical issue with, you see the, uh, the weird-looking gray that's on the track. That is the shading and the groove from the previous game. Uh, this is another port from R-Factor. It is not agreeing with the shaders and whatnot from Assetto Corsa, so some work to be done there. But let's see what the track is like. This is neat for me. Wow, terrible start. <laughs> neat for me because, as I mentioned before, I did not like our factor. I did not like the way it drove. I didn't like the way the cars handled, I mean, and it just was not an enjoyable experience for me. So I didn't get to try all this cool content that came out for it. So I am whoa, totally okay with them adding these car, adding uh, all these modded tracks to a set of horses. So I definitely like the way this game performs physics-wise. But overall, I've been seeing a lot of positive feedback about the actual physics engine for this game. The only complaints I really see is lack of content. Obviously this is early access and unfinished. There's a lot of content that the actual set of course the devs are going to add. I love courses like this. I don't know if I'm particularly good at them. <laughs> Navigator would be nice. I just really love this style of uh, racing. So yeah, the Assetto Corsa devs are obviously working on their own additional content, but all of this... Ooh, we hit the wall? Yes, we hit the wall. <laughs> this is not good. This is not good. Well, I would say overall that took longer than expected to happen. <laughs> uh, probably going a little too... A little too crazy for never have seen this track before. Now I want to know if this will work in multiplayer. I saw that this this one versus the last one I did actually has five pit boxes. So I wonder if you could line up and do and do side by side racing here. Whoa! Well, this is not going well at all. So tracks like this actually kind of have, they kind of bring me back to the the first Need for Speed games before they became uh, what they are today, where you had some of these 
kind of just roadways connected and obviously the the physics engines in those games were nothing like this but it was still most enjoyable for me to be racing on that kind of that kind of circuit and unfortunately this kind of racing is basically unheard of in the states I don't know why that is probably insurance reasons and liability and whatnot it's real popular in New Zealand and uh, much more popular in Europe I like how wide it is. Uh, the other one is very narrow. You feel like you're kind of trapped. Makes it a little bit more challenging, but this is a little bit more high speed for sure. Seems like we're going downhill this time. I thought we would be going uphill. So it's not a hill climb, it's a hill descent. Duo! Easy car. I probably should have started with the, uh, the regular Group A car, the slower one. Hopefully we can do a little bit better on the uphill. Is that the end? I think that was the end. Alright, so it appears no time was given. So hopefully that that gets worked out in the future. I don't know if that's because I'm in practice mode or not. Uh, next, on the uphill, I will put it into race mode and see if that changes anything. Okay, so here we go on the uphill. Um, <laughs> Interesting little glitch going on right here with the driving line. Uh, last track didn't seem to have one at all, but this time I have put it into race mode, so hopefully we get a time. So let's see if we can do a little bit better on the uphill. Maybe try and focus on actually driving a little bit better this time. But the uh, racing line will help a ton if it stays. Looks like it's kind of kind of messed up, but at least it gives me some kind of general direction as to where I'm going. I apologize if there's a little extra ambiance in the background. Uh, i got some Florida thunderstorms rolling through. Or hopefully the power doesn't cut out. Oh, God. Well, I'm going to do much better on the, uh, on the uphill, it seems. <laughs> good graphics. I mean, it's obviously not not up to the standards of today's games or what this game can handle, but it's still very well done. I assume this is all third-party third party content for our factor. I just, I just love the way these, these cars drive. They really do remind me a lot of how my personal car drives. Obviously this has a ton more power and overall grip. But right there is a prime example. This is the way you gotta kinda drive it with the throttle. You know, if you lift off the throttle, the nose will respond better. And if you get on the throttle in a certain way, you can get the back end to come around. But more often than not, they're gonna wanna understeer. Some of the mid-engine cars, like the Lotuses, you don't really get that. Because if you lift off the throttle, you get that real snap over steer. It's much harder to control front-wheel drive cars the same way. So me and Joe have been talking about getting back to uh, F1, doing another season. We're going to do longer races. We're going to do like a 50% race, possibly. Uh, possibly the same distance, but full length qualifying. So it's going to be one or the other. I'm kind of leaning towards the full length qualifying. So it'd be like a... I don't know so much. It'd be like a episode of just qualifying and an episode for the race. Work a little better for us because it's a little easier schedule to follow. Instead of having to record two races a week. Yeah, I knew this turn was up here somewhere. Track map would definitely be useful for this. I think I like it more in this direction, though. 
could just be that I'm getting more used to it now. But my point to the F1 thing was that uh, playing this game as much as I have been lately, I have a feeling I'm going to be terrible when I get back to F1. I, uh, when we did that... Riff it out. I the end was right around here somewhere. Right here. Oh, they don't give you much space to stop. <laughs> when I did the 100% uh, race distance uh, race we did at the end of the season, I was so rusty when we got to qualifying because this game just behaves so much more realistically than that game does. and It just takes a whole different mindset to kind of drive an F1. Okay, so that's actually a pretty quick course. So I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to go ahead and do the same course, but in a different car. Alrighty, so here we are. Same track, Lotus 49. I have not driven this at all. Not even, like, off-camera or anything, so I have no idea what I'm about to get into. I, uh, I know that back in the day when I was playing Grand Prix Legends... Now, keep in mind, when that game came out, I was still pretty young, so uh, a little bit of slack can be given. I could not drive cars in that game for anything. So that leaves me slightly concerned. Didn't didn't seem to get a time for that last one either. Uh, it said when I was done that it was like a 4 something, 4.29. Uh, I actually see the timer going already, so I don't think it works in this one either. So if it would just reset when you start, that would fix that. Oh, man. It's actually uh, a lot faster than I was anticipating. Awesome graphics on this car. I've, I've seen a lot of video of this car on the track. Obviously, it's something that a lot of people gravitate towards. Because it's such a iconic and really an oddball car. This is not something you'd find in most games. No time for talking, it's too too crazy. <laughs> I need to get out of first. But yeah, something about this car and the, the graphics engine, it's just a uh, it's very very believable looking, like the lighting on it, all the chrome pieces and everything, the way they they shine, everything about it just looks incredibly believable. It's a little bit of a shame we're putting it on the backdrop of a outdated kind of graphical track, but it's still really impressive to look at. Very intimidating to drive. <laughs> I feel like I'm... Ooh, get over there. I feel like I'm only giving it three, three tenths of what it actually has in potential. This <laughs> it's got so much speed, so little grip, and so little brakes. It's a lot to uh, it's a lot to handle, especially in a track like this. Another thing that I saw that they put in the notes of the of the point two update that they are going to rework the sound engine. So they're putting it on a more modern style sound engine. It's actually the same sound engine that the automation guys just updated their game to, so a uh, little connection there. But that's one of the more common complaints I see about the game, is that the sounds, they're very flat, they don't have much, whoa, they don't have much range. Uh, it's just kind of kind of has an older, older game style sound engine. Some of the recorded sounds they have are great. I mean, you can hear the clips of the, the engine sound authentic. But the transitions and the way they sound in the environment is not very good. It sounds like they're running in a sound studio rather than sounding like they're running in the... Oh, in the Alps. <laughs> Easy car, easy car. Easy. <laughs> it's 
This is just mental. Nothing about this car is correct. <laughs> this is a bigger workout than the drifting thing was. I think that was possible. Alright, there's the end. If they do add um, timing to this... Oh, look! We got a time, but um, like I said, it starts... The timer starts immediately, so we lost like a minute off of that. Uh, but if they do add the ability to have timed trials, definitely need a little bit more runoff after the finish line. <laughs> Alright, we're back here once again. I want to try and uh, get a decent run uh, through the circuit. I'm going to use the Formula Barth, which I really enjoyed at the Nürburgring. That was the, this is the car that basically got me around there uh, in clean fashion. Uh, I might be a little low on commentary for this run. I'm really going to focus on trying to get a clean lap in, so, or I guess a clean run in would be the correct term. So let's see if we do any better. A lot less power than the uh, Lotus 49 we were just in, but so much more grip. And sequential shifting. And thunderstorm pushing my door open and closed. Distractions. Angle is a little, little bit of a challenge. Can't really see what's coming up ahead of you. But this car actually has enough brakes to get you bowed down when you get near these turns. All right, much better. For some reason, this has always been the style of car I've done best in. I remember in uh, Lift for Speed there was the uh, there was the Fox and then the F3000 were the two kind of junior formula cars. I really excelled in those cars and a little bit of league racing I did in that game. Uh, those were the only two I really ever ooh, easy car. ever really won competitive races. This one does remind me a lot of the Fox and the for Speed FOX. Lots of downforce, good amount of grip. And kind of a non-peaky, but so, whoops, Ran off a little bit there, but no penalty. Oh, there's a penalty. Oh, and we spun. Crap. All right, redo. Give it one more try here. Like I was saying, it was—it's not not a peaky engine, but it has enough power to to make it feel like a race car. You know, it's not not a go kart. Although there was a go kart like car in the first speed too. It'd be cool to have it here. The MRT5 it was a uh, Formula FSAE, I believe. That's what it's called. Car. The ones the universities or colleges build. Pretty good on this section. Now, if they're gonna make the time trial and hot lapping thing more more a part of the game, I would love to see the developers add their own tracks like this. Maybe go out and do a laser scan of Pikes Peak or something like that. That would be phenomenal. Uh, there's not many good games that represent this kind of racing out there. Uh, games like dirt have become so arcade that they might even count. Okay, easy. I think it was coming up here where I started to falter. Yeah, that's better. A fast section here, coming through the houses. How awesome would it be to live somewhere where they do one of these? Ah, uh, this is the turn. It caught me out. Almost got me again. You know, just wake up on Sunday morning to the sound of cars flying by in your driveway. I could live with that.
if this was something that became more popular here, I would I would be doing everything I could to try and get involved in it. But nothing I've seen so far. Not anywhere where I live anyway. It's probably one of the most dangerous forms of of racing. You know, you can't really make everything super safe. You, you try the best you can, but all of these walls and guardrails and things are designed for pedestrian traffic and that kind of stuff, so you can't you can't go too crazy with it, making it safe for cars going 120 miles an hour. It's the bottom out there. Sounds like the backfiring like that. that. Those are the sounds that need, that show off how kind of poor the sound engine is. Uh, they just sound very non-dynamic. They don't, they don't feel like they're in the environment. But that was a very good run. I'm very pleased with that. That was, <laughs> I'm sure there's 10, 15 seconds I could probably knock off of that time, but uh, it felt real good. All right, so enough of the Alps here. Let's move on to another modded track that I found. Alrighty, now we find ourselves at a circuit. This is kind of a club style track. Uh, it's called Mission Raceway Park, based off a real track in the land of the Canadians, which for the record, I do not live in Canada. Whoever whoever it was out there that thought I lived in Canada. Um, yeah, no, I live in Florida. <laughs> it's pretty far from Canada. Uh, anyway, the... Uh, the appeal to me for this track is that it is it looks like kind of your local club racing style track. Uh, one of those tracks that would be pretty much forgotten by any AAA racing title, but like your Gran Turismo's or Forza's or whatnot. Uh, so a lot of these tracks get overlooked. So I want to check this one out. Another R Factor ported ported mod. We are back in the BMW E30 DTM. Just gonna do a couple laps in practice. Here. Looks like we're starting in like the uh, paddock area. I assume we go this way. Maybe. I see cones. I know how to dodge those. Yeah, there's pit road right here. Okay. Uh, looking at the graphics, definitely looks looks very um, R factor. <laughs> Alright, this is a. Um, where am I going? Is this, this is the end of pit road? No, this can't be the end of pit road. That can't be right. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here's the actual track. Uh, once again, we have the glitches where the groove and whatnot of the track are going to be not represented correctly. Uh, overall, the lighting looks very flat and not a Soto Corsa like. But I'm more looking at the. Uh, the layout of the track. I want to check out the tracks more than look at them. Oh, that's a tight little hairpin there. Uh, which way do we go? <laughs> some some racing groove or line would be very helpful for this. There we go. I know this track is partially a drag strip, so the, the basically front stretch of it takes you down the drag strip. I'm sorry for not knowing the the track. Uh, I just I kind of like doing these little first impressions of it because first impressions can say a lot for any track or anything really. This game certainly had a great first impression on me. Oh yeah, here's a drag strip here, and that's why I'm still playing it. Just so gonna go off to the right. Yeah, there's the marker. I missed that first time. So a pretty short little track. Which is nice for for the kind of entry level, just barely getting into the game kind of gameplay. It's nice to have short road courses like this that don't take you six hours to learn. You know, you can oops, see the wrong side of the track here. You could learn this track and maybe an hour of practice and, and have it down. Oh, 
well, a normal person could. Maybe not me. I am not displaying that right now. The lack of visual cues is definitely the downfall here. A little chicane. Very tight right there, but the track opens up in some strange places that might present itself for some great passing opportunities, like coming up to here. If you take a different line through there, you could really get a good run down the drag strip. Whoops! Missed all that gear. Messed up my whole turn one. Alright, so we come down the front stretch here. Let's see if we can maybe get a hot lap in. Into turn one. Very tight right hander. Ooh, washing a little bit wide. It's deceiving. It's definitely a decreasing radius turn. We got a little bit of a increasing radius turn here. Get on the gas mid apex. Stay close to the wall here. Scary wall. Down into this kind of hairpin over a bump through the runoff area of the drag strip. Down a little bit of a back stretch. Break about there. Down into first. Back to second. Down into first. Hard, hard complex right there. You can see the marks where I've lost it a couple times off that curb. And the second for the chicane. Quick little chicane. Back onto this kind of weird opening up turn that takes you down to the drag strip. Miss third gear. And 113.3. A little bit better than my previous. But not as good as my best. Very difficult turn one. That's probably the most difficult turn of the track. A lot of time left right there. Oh, I see a missing turn one there. Just kind of threw off the whole rhythm. When you got tracks this short, it gets down to the point where you really gotta focus on hitting every turn exactly right to make up time. About two tenths up in that first sector. Another difficult one. Let's go through second this time and then down first for this one. Try and get it, fight it to the inside there. Ease up this run to the back stretch. Back, to, back tires really want to get loose coming out of that turn. Stay off of those curbs as much as you can. Losing the front just there. Looks like a much better time. Hit down to 111. Clean drive. Complete five laps without getting any damage. I think that's what it said. It's a good place to do it. <laughs> Even though there is walls all over. This kind of track would definitely scare me as a car owner in real life because of stuff like that. Lots of walls to bump into. Not a whole lot of runoff. You do get into trouble. This is probably the area I could make up the most time right now. Oh, not gonna do it like that. <laughs> See, coming out of here every time the back end wants to come around. Yep, just a little bit. We'll use a little bit of curve there, but kind of launches the car. All right, we'll give it one more lap, and then we'll call it a day here in a Seba Corsa. On front stretch. Really hard braking. Let's try to get that apex. There we go. Set you up for a better launch out. Missed Apex there a little bit. Stay off of this wall. Get right down 
into there. You gotta kind of predict what it's gonna do across that bump. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, this part of the track. Oh, those are some extremely hard tires. <laughs> Alrighty, well, it looks like that 111 is going to be the one that sticks. Uh, first impressions of this track, I really like it. I think this is, uh, I'd like to see them update this one to modern graphics, but if not, it's still really fun to drive, so I, if anybody's out there running a server, I would say add this one to your rotation because, yeah, it's a lot of fun to drive. It'd be cool for some, uh, online races. A track like this, you get a 10 minute qualifying session and you could you could learn it well enough to really perform okay in a race. Uh, some of the bigger tracks, that's a little bit more of a challenge. So there's definitely a place for uh, club tracks like this in the game. I would like to see them not only add some of those hill climbs uh, type of circuits or courses like the, the Alps that were running earlier, some club tracks like this would be cool to add as well. But that is going to do it for today. I am out of time. The storms are rolling in and threatening to turn my power off at any moment. So I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.